even during the food uh, vigorously food processing. Because the water there is very important for the quality. Now, the water holding capacity is highly related to the pH value of a, food, of a meat product. So the question here I want to ask you, what is the normal meat pH? Usually, 5.6 to 5.8. For some of the reason, if the pH of a meat is decreased to around 5.0, what is going to happen? At this moment, it will be result very low water holding capacity. Because at that moment, the pH value, which is called isoelectricity, electric value, which means no positive or negative charge in a neutral status. At that moment, the water activity, at that moment, the water holding capacity is lower, is at the lowest. It may not be easy to understand here, but I give you some examples. Most of you here like eat beef. I came from China. In China, most of people eat pork. So the pork quality is very important. The same here, the beef quality. What is a normal pork should be looks like? It should be red, firm, and no extracted of moisture, called non Exhibited. However, during the processing, especially the slaughtering process, if the animal is in a stress environment, or very stressful before you, how is it, exaggerated, even the poultry even, it will become of two results. This is typically in the pork. Number one is called PSE, number two is called BF. So this figure can explain that. First of all, what is PSC? The product is pale, soft, and exudative. Exudative, which means a moisture extracted on the surface. Why? Because of the pre-slaughter stress. So the glycogen usually it's in the liver. They all use during glycolysis. So what happened? Generate a huge amount of lactic acid. So normally the meat is 5.6 to 5.8. If the animal in a pre-slaughtered stress, the pH is dramatically decreased and the temperature is still high of the meat products or of the bodies, what's going to happen? It will be lose the water. Think about it. If this suddenly dramatically dropped around here, the water holding capacity was at very low level. What gonna happen? In this meat, the water gonna come out. That is called exudative. Then, once your water comes out, there are the lights shining, reflection onto your eye, what are gonna see it? Hell. Okay, so that's why you see the pail, because no water holding capacity, or at a very low level, the water ex extracted this from the surface. That's why it looks like it's pale, because the light reflection into your eye, it looks like it's, it's like a light white color. So very pale. But we don't like it. Okay, in another condition, we should talk about DFD. Dark, firm, and dry. 
This is a step as we also don't like it. This is kind of thing is usually as an animal in a chronic stress. Usually in like the very humidity or like a hot weather, what gonna happen? Very small glycogen left. So very few lactic acid generate through glycolysis. That's called a post-mortem biochemical reaction. Very few lactic acid bacteria or lactic acid generate. What are going to happen? Then the meat product of pH end up right here. Will be about 6.2 to 6.4. Then end up with what? Very, very high water holding capacity. So the water is hold on there. Therefore, the hole looks like purplish red. Because too much water is there. So the major components of the meat is myoglobin. Then the reflected into your eye is a dark red color. And it's very firm and dry because the water is completely holding there. Okay, so that's the reason. I end up with very high water holding capacity. So these two uh, stress environments should be avoided during the pre start the slaughter process. Okay, this is the post harvest uh, managed con uh, con quality con control. What we do? In order to improve the pork quality or the meat quality, uh, during the post harvest, we want to ma ma maintain the three most important uh, issues. Number one is juiciness, number two is tenderness, number three is flavor. Now, among those three items, tenderness is more important because the consumer survey market showed if you improve tenderness, about 10% of the uh, share force value, you could be increased the market value about $10, sometimes more than that. So the tenderness is number one. How they do? They add a moisture enhanced ingredients, which is called sodium trifolate And you can see during the cooking, the tenderness is the value of the tenderness is actually increased when the sodium triphosphate from 0 to 5 percent and more important even you cooking temperature increase from 7.2 to 80 degrees celsius this means the geometric center temperature it's not changed dramatically can you see that it's still very high so this tells you in the realities of meat processing we add some of the ingredients like sodium triphosphate, tripolyphosphate, to keep the tenderness because they will be keeping you the water holding capacity. The high amount of the sodium tripolyphosphate usually end up with a higher water holding capacity of the meat. Okay, so this is another example. Okay, last two slides. We want to mention something else regarding the antimicrobials. So number one is the chlorine water. So we want to talk about this. The very interesting. We can, we can talk about it. Okay. So this is the curve. Second the curve is like that. This curve is going like that. So we will be doing this. We'll be using this one. Another one. Use yellow color. Okay, this is chlorine water. Something I want to mention. What is chlorine water? In the industry, we usually call it Corax. C O O C O O X. A bucket of Corax, five dollars dissolved in the water. Mix, mix, mix it up. What's the reaction will be happening? Chlorine with water become HClO, ClO, and H. Okay, 
If you have a bucket of Corax, you dissolve in the water, that is not a really good method. Because at this moment, the pH will be 9 to 10. Depends the volume. And the, at that moment, the dominant components in this chlorine water is ClO1. Chlorine ions in this guy. We don't want it. It will not have a very strong antimicrobial activity. Because the most important antimicrobial activity is this guy, hypochloric acid. So what we have to do, you need to add citric acid to low down the pH to around the 6.8 at the neutral level. Because at this moment, it will be dominated with hypochloric acids. That's a major component for curing bacteria. OK, can we, can we do the pH lower than that? No, not really. If the pH lower than that, what is going to happen? Chlorine of gas. If the pH go to 4 or 5, the chlorine of gas is going to come out. I worked before in Salinas, in Central Valley, California, in Taylor Farms, in a pilot plants. If you have that off gas comes out, you're like tearing. You're not really feeling sad, you're just tearing. The, the, the eyes is moisture, the material, like you're crying. That's the damage of the off-gas for the human body. So we have to avoid it, okay? That's something I want to mention. So, make sure when you prepare the chlorine water, you need to adjust the citric acid. Use citric acid to adjust pH to 6.8. Now, in the industry, we use Corax. We also use like calcium chloride, like potassium chloride or those other salts forming chlorine solutions. So this is something I want to mention. Second or third thing, when you prepare chlorine, you need to make sure it's clean container. Because if you have any dust debris there, the free chlorine, which is HClO, we refer as free chlorine, will be degraded and the concentration will be decreased dramatically. No? Okay, so that's something I want to mention from 50 degrees zero to 50 ppm to zero in like 30 seconds. Now the maximum amount of the chlorine concentration used for the industry is 200 parts per million ppm of the full contact surface. Okay, so this is the chlorine. Now, Kim, you do lots of the poetry research, you will need to know. Chlorine is the number two antimicrobials used in the food, in, in the poultry meat processing. Using the chili tank, in calling the online reprocessing, uh, online, that's called online reprocessing. Inside and outside the birds wash. Because the number one is peroxyacetic acid, the reason is the poultry meat has to be served into Russia in some places. Because in the European country, they don't allow you to have any products treated with chlorine. Because the chlorine byproducts, like trihalomethane, will generate. And they think it's a toxication material for the health. Therefore, they are interested about is electrolyzed water. And this one I already mentioned in the first day of the class. You need an electrode cell, positive and negative charge. Once you put the water there, and you put the salt, because the ionic bonds between sodium and the chloride, therefore, it's not a really strong bond. They can be separated once you have electricity. Then how they go? 
the positive charge and the negative charge attracted with each, each other go to the separate ends. Therefore, from the positive ends, you are coming up with what? Very low acidic solution, which is hypochloric acids. That's a sanitizing. And the negative charge ends, you will come up with sodium hydroxide, which is a sanit which is a cleaning product, which is actually in the detergents. Because they try to uh, dissolve all the food soil on the surface. That further can be decontamination of the bacteria. So they come out this product. Now for this one, it will generate is an acid electrolyzed water. Because you know the acid is very corrosive, will cause the skin or the food contact surface corrosive. So in the real life right now, they put a membrane filter system on the center, they will generate neutralized electrolyzed water. So the pH can be maintained seven to eight, six to eight. Then they can be freely to be used. And the European country, EU, they approved the sodium, uh, sodium chloride. Of course, it's a food grade. It's not like a chemical grade. It's a food grade sodium chloride, electronized water, to be used during the poultry meat decontamination and also fresh produce instead of they using chloride because they thought the chlorine byproducts will be at the minimum level, especially with the pH uh, at the neutral level. Okay, so this is at the end of this session, we introduce a little bit about the electronalyzed water. It's a technology has been generated almost 30 years. So at the published there's 100, 1,000, maybe 1,000 papers there talk about the antimicrobial activity, okay? So this end up with what we have for the water session. And uh, Thursday, we will start to talk about lipids. And then uh, we will be get together at the lab and the KC showman will show us uh, how to use the water activity meter. Uh, so we will do some demo about hot dogs and juice, how to test the water activity. But I tell you, it's not that easy. Uh, there are some trick tricks there that I will measure. And uh, next week, I think February 11th is the day is off. Is that right? We don't have a class that day. So I will give you the homework of that, of that week. So you can do the homework. It's open book and uh, maybe, I would say like six to 10 questions. So you go ahead and do the homework. Is that okay? Good.